So here we are at the Lagos Tech Fest, early 2023. Do you want to introduce yourself and the name of your law firm? My name is Adirunke Alexa Didipe, and I am the founder at Page Stones. Page Stones is a law firm based in Lagos, Nigeria, and um, we have particular interest in foreign investments, technology, and innovation. And this is uh, really cool. Thank you for speaking. Uh, you're a founding partner. Yes. Uh, were there any co-founders or was it you alone? I, we went with we two founders actually, okay. so yeah. And what's really interesting is that you worked in a conventional firm. Mm -hmm. Let's start with this. Um, you said that you wanted to find a law, you wanted to found a law firm that was fundamentally different yeah. than a conventional one. So how are you different than a conventional law firm? Um, I think for us where we're very, we're very client-centric. I don't believe there's any law firm that is not client-centric, but the way that we try to differentiate ourselves is by deviating from, tradi from the traditional law firms is by keeping things very simple, right? Um, we realize that a lot of um, businesses find lawyers difficult. They find lawyers inaccessible, and they find us a bit cumbersome sometimes, yes. even in terms of delivering responses and legal opinions. So for us, we try as much as possible to simplify the law. We try to be accessible. We're available via WhatsApp, weekends, Sundays. You know, we, we just try to make sure that at the, en at, the at the end of the day, the client achieves its bottom line. And we're also very practical. So there's more often than not, there's a difference between regulation and what obtains in practice, right? And for us, we try to make sure that even if there are no quote and unquote legal answers, right, to what the client wants, we try to make sure that the client is working or doing their business within the confines of the law. Excellent. Yeah. To, to summarize some of what you said earlier and allow you to elaborate on it, mm -hmm. you said that one of the things that you want all of your lawyers to do mm -hmm. is to listen. Listen yeah. to the client and figure out what the mission is yeah. and stay mission oriented. Don't, yes. don't forget about everything else. Mm -hmm. Listen and ask what does the client want. Is that, is that a fair summary? Yeah, that's a fair summary because at the end of the day, the client hasn't come to you just because they want you to quote certain provisions of the law or to cite certain right. sections in the law because they can read, right? You might as well just refer the client to section 36 of the NDPD Act or whatever. Right. But in reality, the client wants a solution. So they want to know whether they are doing business within regulation mm -hmm. and if they are not how can they ensure that they are doing business within regulation so even if the law does not provide for it you have to be creative you have to be able to think you have to be solution driven solution driven yes. okay and we also had a great conversation of a, a pre-game about how are we going to cover some obvious questions mm -hmm. uh, one obvious question is that you are a, a woman mm -hmm. who wanted to start a law firm mm -hmm. in the tech space with, in, in, with young firms, and it's an unspoken or spoken truth that uh, women are underrepresented in, in a lot of parts of the world, including here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And you had such an interesting initial response and then a follow-up response. So do you, I don't want to put words, I don't want to repeat your words. Do you want to repeat your, the first thing you said about um, what it's like to be a woman that is um, innovating and starting something new in fields that women are, in which women are underrepresented? Yeah, um, as I said, I think generally women are very hardworking. We're a very hardworking set of people. We're committed. Mm -hmm. That's also very important because I see situations where, you know, more often than not, people get employed and within two months they're looking for jobs elsewhere or they're looking for the next best thing. Women are more generally more stable and we're more committed. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of standing out so in terms of trying to do things differently i generally encourage women to give it their best right and to be creative you know sometimes what a client wants is very simple sometimes um creativity also makes you stand out right and you also have to be very consistent sometimes it's tough the legal profession is generally <laughs> oversaturated in this part of the world. Interesting. Yes, in my class alone at the law school, we 
we were over a thousand graduated that year. Wow. Yeah, so the legal profession is oversaturated and of course there are more male founders, right? Yeah. And how do you differentiate yourself when you don't have the same physical muscle or the same stature as a man? Hmm. Consistency. Consistency. Consistency is very key. Innovation, creativity. And, and listen. <laughs> the final, final thing, what you didn't yeah. say is your initial response, uh, which if you don't mind, you're, your initial response is, well, you don't like to play the sex card. The female is. card, yes. I do not like to, to play it because I think it's lame and it could be an excuse um, uh, on occasion. You like to win on your own merits. Exactly. It's For me, it's been overflowed and sometimes even abused. You know the fact that women are underrepresented or that the climate is less favorable to women yes that exists but i think we're also to some extent we've grown beyond that and by continuing to differentiate ourselves and by continuing to show through your skill sets that you're able to break through those barriers then it's becoming less obvious that you know <laughs> women don't have as much skin in the game right. as the men. And in the end, the client cares about the results. If you deliver results, they'll stay with you. Is exactly. They will and not only stay with, with you, but they would also recommend other clients to you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Word of mouth is the basis yeah, for everything. Exactly. Maybe the very last question, uh, because you have things to do with. Thank you again for taking the time to do this. Um, uh, so many people outside of the country still have a bunch of myths in their head mm -hmm. that have come up in the last, well, since I got here. Yeah. Uh, and people are very eager to bust myths. They're very eager to repeat things that they've heard from friends and family yeah. from outside of Nigeria and shoot it down. Is there anything that you want to say quickly as somebody who works in the legal realm uh, with businesses, with investors, about the investment climate, this notion of corruption, danger, Boko Haram, any of these topics, especially governance, and, and business ethics and corruption, are, are they factors or are they inflated factors that are sensationalized out in the minds of people outside of Nigeria? Okay, um, I think that first of all, if you're, if you're not doing business in Nigeria, you're not doing the right thing, right? Because there's a huge market here. Um, it is challenging, it can be challenging. And um, like they always say, I don't want to be cliche, but there, there's no, there's no, there's no benefits without pain, or there's no gain without pain, right? Um, and I think Nigeria is the sort of place that if you know the right people, right, talk to the right people, um, engage the right people from the on start, it's a, it's a it's a climate that you can navigate. And um, government engagement is also very important. I always say this to people because sometimes you find out that. And I gave an example whilst I was on stage on what happened to Bukaga. There are existing laws, but those laws are not obtainable in practice for one reason or the other. And um, one day the government can wake up and say, oh, I want to enforce these laws. So if you are very involved in, you know, um, the community, community engagement, you know what is happening. You try to impose the regulators. I'm not saying influence regulators <laughs> to suit your needs, but I mean, just like in the tech sub sector, that's what a lot of businesses do to try to help shape regulation, right, for the purpose of ensuring that their businesses can thrive in that environment. So, yes, um, corruption exists, um, insecurity exists, but Personally, I do know that sometimes, especially when you haven't been to this part of the world and you haven't had the opportunity to do, to do business in this part of the world, there's some over-sensationalism. Over-sensationalized yeah. issues. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much again. Do you want to mention the name of your law firm one more time? Page Stones Legal. Page Stones Legal. Yes. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you. It was okay. nice to meet you. <laughs>